Are you stuck trying to execute a butterfly? I'll tell you five basic tips for butterfly beginners coming up next. Voice over goalie. Hey, Wayne the Voice over goalie here. My channel is all about bringing you awesome goalie content. So if you've liked, subscribed, or commented on one of my videos, you are totally awesome. So a few months back, I made a video about three tips for better butterfly pushes. If you missed it, you can check it out right here. And it seems like that video was super successful based on all of your feedback. A lot of you wrote me thanking me for helping you with your butterfly pushes. But then I realized that some of you aren't quite there yet. And in fact, you might be stuck executing a butterfly in the first place. So I wanted to make a follow-up butterfly video. Or is it a prequel? Where I give you my five tips for a basic butterfly. But before we get started, if you have a secret butterfly tip of your own, let us all know in the comments below. Okay, so let's get out on the ice. To get into a good foot butterfly, you have to really wide, low stance, and then you want to drive your knees down to the ice. A lot of beginners think they have to hop to disengage their blades. So they end up looking like this. But what you really want to do is get a nice wide stance because that means you're halfway into your butterfly already. And then really drive these two knees down into the ice. So once you drop into the butterfly, one of the most important things is to keep your butt up and your body straight. You want to keep your body weight on your knees. Having your body weight on your knees really allows you to have that mobility to still lean into a shot one way or the other. So point two, once you're in the butterfly, how wide should your butterfly be? That's really up to your comfort level and, and athleticism. It's okay to have a narrow butterfly. As long as you get your knees together, no pucks are gonna sneak through here, even if they go through your pads. But some scenarios, like in a blocking situation, you wanna to try to get your legs as wide as they can, especially in a screen, so that you're covering as much of this area as you can. So now, point three. You're in the butterfly, what do you do with your hands? Well, that breaks down to a couple different things. Are you going for a more blocking butterfly or a reaction butterfly? So in a scenario where you want a blocking butterfly, when you drop down into the butterfly, you want to keep those hands tucked in tight because you're not going to have time to react. So by keeping your hands tucked in tight, that closes all the holes that between your arm and your body on that side and your arm and body on this side. So blocking butterfly is really effective in scenarios where the puck isn't close and you don't have time to react or if the shot is coming through a screen and you don't, you're not gonna have time to pick it up. The other placement for your hands is forward and active. And that's for plays where you are reacting and reading the puck. So by dropping in the butterfly, you're taking down the area low on the ice, but your hands are active so you can still make moves to track the puck up and down. So forth, how do you recover from the butterfly? You know, believe it or not, there is a right and wrong leg to recover on. And that's based on where the puck comes off of you after, sh after the shot. So say I'm in the butterfly and the puck bounces off of my left pad and into the corner. What I want to do is recover using my right leg because that is efficiency of movement. So visual acuity, turn my body, engage my right leg. Conversely, on the other side, puck comes to this side, bounce off of there, I want to recover it with my left pad because that is already pushing me in the direction that I want to go to. So the puck comes in, bounces off my pad, visual acuity, turn, load, push and go. So the last tip, people ask me, so I got the butterfly down, but I can't butterfly slide. How can I learn and effectively get better at butterfly slides? Well, it comes down to learning the mechanics starting from your stance. So if you're in your stance, your blades are already engaged. So you can better get the mechanics down of dropping and pushing. Same goes for this way. Your blade is engaged, drop and push. And then eventually, you'll be able to get this motion down of that. Because it's the same exact motion. You're engaging your blade, your leg is down, and you push. Oh, I saw this on the internet. Yeah, no. That's not going to happen. 